I'm you all need to finish the song? I gotta go check traps. I'm here still. Tell her that I, my audience is over here. <laughs> Reagan's audience was here the whole time. He kind of forgot to pay in the audience. Anyways, almost everyone has heard the hype about grass fed beef. And they've heard that it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Beef is a staple to many meals, and I believe that the consumer should know as much as possible about the product that they are consuming. I've been around and raising beef cattle my, for nearly my entire life. <coughs> And I have also eaten both grass and grain-fed cattle, and I can tell you from experience which one is better. That would be grain-fed. Uh, I also work at a feedlot, finishing out grain-fed cattle for slaughter. And I'm currently pursuing a uh, livestock production degree at Southeast Community College in Beatrice. Grass-fed beef isn't all that it's cracked up to be, and with all the benefits of grain-fed beef, it's the only logical conclusion, only logical choice, over grass-fed beef. By the end of my speech, my audience will have a better understanding of why grain-fed beef is a better all-around product than grass-fed. In this speech, I'll explain some reasons why grain-fed beef is not a bad choice. First, I'll explain how both types are raised. Then, I'll explain the difference in fats between the two types of beef. And then, I'll uh, explain some common misconceptions in the beef industry. Let's get started with some knowledge of how both types of these beef are raised. Both types of these cattle are produced for beef, grain, and grass-fed. There are many differences in the way these types of cattle are raised. The final product, that being said, the final product is very different. Gr grass-fed beef is uh, born on pasture and fed grass up to four to six months and then weaned off of the cow and then they are also fed grass for the rest of their life. They are finished out on grass. Grain-fed cattle also are born on pasture. They eat grass for the first four to six months of their life along with their mother's milk, and then they're weaned off and taken to a feed yard where they're fed a certain ration, usually consisting of uh, corn, distiller's grain, some type of roughage such as ground corn stalks, hay, uh, alfalfa, ground straw, etc. And they're also usually fed some other sources of protein, uh, other stuff like that. Uh, Grain-fed cattle grow a lot faster and their growth curve is a lot shorter than grass-fed cattle, making a better end product. They also put on more fat due to the higher content of protein in their diet versus the grass-fed. Now let's look at the difference in meat between grass and grain-fed cattle. Both types put on, put on fat, just different types. Grain-fed cattle put on fat faster and more of fat, more of the fat. Desirable white fat is produced by grain-fed cattle. As you can see here, that is a grain-fed steak and that is a grass-fed steak. There is a lot more marbling and marbling is just little specks of white fat that's in that steak. As you can see, this one does not have very much marbling. Marbling is what causes the steak to be a juicy, flavorful cut of meat that provides a pleasurable eating experience for the consumer. Grass-fed steaks, or grass-fed beef, takes a lot longer to grow and finish, finish the calf out. And as the uh, muscle grows older, it gets tougher. So it's a less desirable trait when you're eating a steak, whatever it is you're eating. Ah, now let's look at some common misconceptions in the beef industry. Grass-fed cattle are not given any antibiotics. That is a big misconception. Grass-fed cattle are raised the exact same way that, that grain-fed cattle are raised for the first four to six months of their life. They're all given the same vaccinations as the beef cattle, or as the grain-fed cattle, and the same vaccinations when they get sick. If that was not the case, Grass-fed producers would not be able to make the cut. They would completely lose everything they had because they would have such a death loss in the uh, cattle that they own. Uh, another misconception is grass-fed beef is healthier than grain-fed beef. That is not true as well because the only reason that grass-fed beef is said to be healthier is because it is leaner than grain-fed beef. 
grain-fed beef also has many essential nutrients in it, and many of them do come from the fat. Saturated fat is the only uh, bad fat that is found in any kind of beef. And there are also 20 cuts of lean beef in grain-fed cattle as well. Now you have an idea of why grass-fed is not all that it's made out to be. Grass-fed beef is not all that it's cracked up to be, and with all the benefits of grain-fed beef, it is only logical to choose grain-fed over grass-fed. Today I've explained how both types of beef are raised, and the result of how they're raised, as well as some common misconceptions in the beef industry. Are you still going to believe the hype about grass-fed beef, or choose the logical and more pleasing conventional beef? Also, grass-fed has very many, very many uh, false advertisements, such as this here. Taste the grass-fed difference. You definitely can taste the difference, but this is portraying the difference to be that grass-fed tastes better, which, in fact, that is not true due to the fact that grass-fed beef has a major lack of marbling and it's an older cut of meat, typically, so it's going to be more tough because the meat comes from muscle. So, that's that.